I'm Katie Haw, the Youth Curator Program Coordinator and one of the many teaching artists that partner with 11 youth curators who are all co-producers of this fun, educational short film. We are honored to continue the award-winning legacy of the Northwest African American Museums Program. For 2020, we decided to explore Washington State's Black Women of the Arts, engaging their artistic work in music, literature, and dance influenced by the Pacific Northwest. Little did we know the challenges this year would present our group of youth. COVID, racism on the forefront, police brutality, protests, and quarantine lockdowns. Despite all of that, the 2020 Youth Curator Program rose to the challenge, creating a truly special experience, which is why we are so proud to showcase their talent, resiliency, and creativity. Sit back and enjoy this short film. We would like to welcome our guest teaching artist and expert on Black women in history, Dr. Quanita Cobbins Monica, to talk to us about the importance of Black women in the arts. Black women in the Pacific Northwest played important roles throughout history and made significant contributions to the region. While battling decades of racial and gender discrimination, they fought as fearless leaders and active participants in movements for social change, such as the suffrage, civil rights, black power, and recently, the Black Lives Matter movement. Despite such achievements, we often do not hear about them and their work is often overlooked or undervalued, especially black women in the arts. Black women artists are important in our society through the use of poetry, literature, music, dance, and painting, they give rise to women's voices and political expressions that empower the masses, tell stories of lived experience, and heal the spirit. Sierra Wilson was born October the 25th, 1985 in Austin, Texas. She knew music was her destiny at a very young age. She joined the group Hearsay before starting her solo career reaching star status with her debut album, The Goodies, and making the Billboard Hot 100 list. Sierra is now a mother, a wife, and a strong leader in the Seattle community with her husband, quarterback Russell Wilson, reading to the children at the Seattle Children's Hospital, providing 1 million meals to those impacted by the pandemic. She is one of the board members of the Why Not You Foundation, focusing on supporting and motivating young girls worldwide. Sierra's impact has branched out beyond music, and rooted itself into social change. Amanda Morgan is a native of Tacoma, Washington. Inspired by ballet, she joined the Pacific Northwest Ballet, where she noticed no one looked like her. Using it as inspiration, she dedicated herself into becoming an example for girls of color in Seattle, accomplishing more before the age of 25 than many do in a lifetime. Performing lead roles and having ballet pieces such as George Balachin's The Nutcracker and Ronald Hinn's Sleeping Beauty. Eventually founding the Seattle Project, a group of collaborating artists focusing on dance and art pieces that break down barriers of accessibility. It doesn't matter what color skin you have, says Morgan. If you want to achieve something and work hard for it, then you can reach your dreams. Olita Adams is a Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, and pianist who found success in the music industry during a time when making an impact as a Black female was difficult in a white female-dominated profession. Born on May 4th, 1953, Olita spent the first years of her life in Seattle before moving to Yakima, Washington with her family. While performing at a bar, Tears for Fears sought her to contribute her talents to their 1989 album, The Seed of the Love. Her voice was featured on their second album, cruising it to the top 40 around the world. That same year, she recorded her debut album, Circle of One. She now lives in Kansas City with her husband, John, away from the public eye. When asked about the impact of her music, she says, I hope it speaks to them in their own way. Pat Wright is a legendary gospel singer whose voice still echoes in every corner of Seattle. She migrated from Texas to Washington on a segregated bus, lived in a segregated neighborhood and performed black pride songs in segregated schools. Surviving abuse every step of the way as a woman of color, she was a major presence in the Seattle music scene in the 60s and the 70s and is listed as Metropolitan Top 50 Most Influential Musicians. She sang at Jimi Hendrix's funeral 
and for President Obama. I never thought I would live to see an African American become President of the United States of America. With all of the prejudice that this country has against people of color, said Wright. Now 79 and retired, Pat Wright lives in the Central District, which has become predominantly white, making it more difficult to perfect the gospel song without the black contingent. Gospel can't simply be sung and you don't clap and sway for the heck of it, says Wright. The idea is to work the lyrics out of you like an emotion welling up in the heart, like a situation that needs fixing, like a journey with oppression on the back end and hope on the front end. Thank you for joining us for Washington State's Black Women of the Arts. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We hope you are inspired to learn more about the rich legacy of Black women of the arts within the Pacific Northwest and become the next generation of great artists.